Blog Talk Radio. Believer 
in Christ Jesus. I'm praying that each and every one of you are walking in victory. Yes, Lord, we have our challenges. I promise you we do. We're going to be talking about new life, the newness of life. Talking about Romans 6 and 4, where we read that we were buried with Christ Jesus symbolically at his death in baptism. But the wonder of wonders, beloved, is we are resurrected like he was into new life. Now, we are now new creatures in Jesus the Christ. And there should be, hey, there should be now, but yeah, amen goes right there. There should be some very obvious signs of this new life. Talking about newness of life right here on Fire the Gospel Experience. Have a wonderful special guest that's going to be breaking bread of encouragement and the word of God. Talking about the man of God, Reverend John Jones member of my church, associate minister at New St. Hurricane Missionary Baptist Church, broadcasting right here live in Pine Bluff, Arkansas. And I guess we're going to be just doing a local celebration of the saints of God here because word up, have another fellow resident of Pine Bluff, Arkansas, evangelist Cassie Williams is going to be breaking bread of encouragement right here on fire the gospel experience so you still have time to go ahead and give your family members and friends and maybe some of those co-workers that you're working with every day that you know could use some inspiration just like i know i can each and every day and i believe each and every one of you needs a joke in our spiritual life amen goes right there we've already had prayer holy spirit god thank you for your presence And I appreciate you lighting the fuse that's going to set this internet and the radio airwaves on sanctified Holy Ghost fire. We make no apologies for lifting up our God. So you better be ready because we about to get our sanctified shoulder praise on right here on fire, the gospel experience.
Hallelujah. I promise you, Lord God, I promise you, we have just got to do better. Amen. Sounds of John Clare right here on Fire the Gospel Experience talking about I got to do better. You got to do better. Yes, Lord Jesus, we have got to do better. Listen. We started this fire gospel off with a new gospel artist to fire the gospel experience, talking about Jaffia Mene with God is so amazing. What a beautiful millennial song. Had such a nice upbeat flow to it and flavor. I told you and I promised y'all right here on fire the gospel experience, you are going to get some of the very best in all of the different blends and flavors of gospel music. We're going to give you the contemporary. We're going to give you the traditional. We're going to give you some urban. We're going to give you some street gospel. I promise you, we're going to give you some gospel jazz just for the nourishment of your spirit and mind as we lift up our God. I have a man of God here. Y'all know how I'm always soliciting those men of God. Being a man of God myself, I just love when brothers get together and praise. We see women worshiping and praising all the time. They surrender, they submit, but it seems like sometimes us men, we have a bit of some struggles sometimes. We're so reserved, we're so manly, and all of our ego Statistical male ways, but that's all right. I have a man of God here that we're going to break it down. We're going to just talk about some things that we need to talk about, and I promise you, I believe it will be a blessing to you, and I am just happy to have with us man of God right here from Pine Bluff, Arkansas, who has studied at the University of Arkansas at Pine Bluff. That is our centerpiece right here in Pine Bluff, talking about UAPB Golden Lion. So without any further ado, my pleasure to introduce to some and to present to everyone else my special guest for Word for Fire, the Gospel Experience, Reverend John Jones is in the house. Amen. Thank you. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. What a wonderful Hallelujah. introduction. I, I feel pretty special, Doc. I don't get that kind of introduction often, so I appreciate Amen. that. Yes, Lord. We're going to make quality sure. education with a personal touch. Yes, sir. Amen. Listen, we're going to make sure that uh, whenever I come into contact with your inner most special guest, you're going to get first class. You're going to get proper treatment right here on Fire the Gospel Experience because I appreciate you being the man of God that you are. Now, listen. You are our associate minister at our wonderful church, New St. Hurricane Missionary Baptist Church, Pastor Derek Easter. And um, yes, you, are, you 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 serve and in double duty assignments. You are a minister of music as well. That's correct, yes, sir. Too much to be much required. Amen. Now I see you cutting serve. up on them keyboards. I see you cutting up on them keyboards. Appreciate you, that. Appreciate you. But too much to be much required. Yes, and sir. That's when God thing, blesses too. you. I believe I would wear the wear out than rust out. What about you? That's that's my motto. Um, yeah, if you're yeah. working, God will find you where you're supposed to be. Yes, sir. Amen. And well, you know, I. Go ahead, sir. Uh, uh, oh. And when you're working, what God does is, if you're faithful to what's in your hands, he, 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 that qualifies you to get some more to your hands. Too much is too much required. But what has to happen is, you have to be content with what's in your hand and be found faithful. If you're faithful yes, and you're focused, God will give you a uh, favor to do what else you want to do after that. So I started hey, off as a child, man, playing in church. Uh, we didn't have a musician for a while, so we would have fast and shut in. And in one city, and at the shut in, there would be no eating. We would uh, pray every three hours, 12, 3, 6, 9, 12, 3, 6, 9, 12. And in between, wasn't nothing to do because there's no TV, no. So I picked up the guitar, and I was just bang on it. <laughs> and pretty soon it started sounding like something, and that's where it all started for me musically. In the city wow. of St. Louis, at the Church of the Living God on 2008 Cash. Yes, sir. Amen. Amen. And when did this calling upon your life to preach God's word come? Well, that that happened over a period of time. I was faithful to plan 
But I believe God kept me around music long enough to catch a word that would change my life. So what would happen Amen. is I would show up to church. I would do church stuff. But church really wasn't my focus. It was how can I shine? How can I feel good playing music? And okay. what had to happen was an encounter with God. And so I mm. messed around and got a little too close to real word, real anointing. Yeah. And when mm. I got there, one, one thing happens is when you experience the love of Christ and you experience God's power, uh, yeah. you don't want to go back. There's nothing else that compares mm. to that. And so after mm. that, I, I've been chasing. Now, here's the challenge. Um, mm. You don't want an experience. You want a relationship. And so what I had to do was grow from just um, loving church and loving music and hanging out with people to actually create and getting involved in a relationship with the God of everything, who has everything. Yes, Amen. Amen. Yeah, now, I, I appreciate you, sir, for supporting my second book, The Man Code, Being a Man of Purpose on Purpose. God has just pulled my heart to... Uh, and just administer to men on what it takes for us to be what God created and called us to uh, to be. So first of all, thank you for purchasing my book. I'm praying that yes, it sir, blesses you. As you I, I thank you. I, I was gonna say I'm praying that it blesses you as you read it. Let's talk about men, cause my heart yes, goes sir. out to men. I'm sure as your heart goes out to men. There's not enough of us in place. I don't care if you're talking about in our homes, in our neighborhoods, and definitely in our churches. What's holding us back? Is it just the three things that God hates, the lust of the eyes, the lust of the flesh, and the pride of life? Because those are three powerful influences. I'm going to tell you as a man of God myself to this day, I have to keep my guard. That's right. We got to be steadfast. And I move. Those are the big three. And, um, and believe it or not, there's a world and a system outside of us that was created to keep us oppressed. And so for, mm. because of those things, we have obstacles that mm. uh, keep keep men from being what we were called to be um, in the garden. Everything we needed was in the garden. But mm. here, That's so right. it was the lust of I, the pride of life, all of those. But one, one other thing that kind of stuck to me was that if you let what everybody else is doing, color what you're doing. Hmm. And you're not leading. You're you're not a th- there's a thermometer and there's a thermostat. And as a man, God called us to lead and to be in leadership. And as a thermometer, all you can do is check the temperature in the room. But as a thermostat, you're supposed to change the atmosphere. And what That's a lot right. of people are doing is allowing the culture of the world. Let the things of this world color them, and instead of being thermostats, they're being thermometers. Amen. That's a, that's a wise word. I like that. I like that. I like that analogy. That's very symbolic. Um, my my thing is is that I honestly believe, and I, I talk about this in my book, that most of men as young boys had gotten so wrapped up and enamored with those new experiences in our flesh that we were never able to mature past those adolescent feelings of sexual desires, of being such a, a, a strong man. And I think that fed a lot to our carnality, to our mental state, and we didn't have that proper balance of spirituality to keep our carnal minds in check. Can you help, can you help us with that, Doc? Uh, yes, sir. Yes, sir. We've been taught by, by the coaches to be sensory. So we've always been what feels good, smells good, tastes good, feels We've been always chasing the sensory of the flesh. But the problem mm-hmm. is the more you indulge the flesh, no matter how good it tastes or feels, it eventually kills you. You eat enough mm-hmm. cookies, it tastes good, it'll kill you mm-hmm. if you eat nothing but mm-hmm. cookies. You eat enough mm-hmm. chicken, it tastes good, but if you eat enough of it, it will kill you. And so mm-hmm. whatever indulges the flesh, too much of it has the potential to kill you. However, mm-hmm. the things of the spirit are for eternal. And so mm-hmm. we've been cultured to chase the things of the flesh instead of the things of the spirit. And that sounds good, but we still live in the flesh. So how do you deal with the fact that you're still in the flesh, but one of the yes. sort of things of the spirit? And nah. one of the things that, it, it, when I heard this word, it really 
It changed the way I look at things. We have to be more cognizant of our covenant than we are of our current condition. Let mm. me, can I say that again? We have to be more cognizant of yeah. our covenant than we are of mm. our current condition. We have to give more thought to our uh, uh, the covenants we made to our house, kids, car, family, 401k than of our current fleshly condition, whatever we're in front of. Is it worth you losing your ministry, your manhood, your marriage, your 401k, your house? All for Amen. what fleshly things in front of you. When we become more cognizant of our covenant, I guarantee mm. you, more cognizant of our covenant than our current condition, I promise you, you'll make better choices with the help of the, yeah. God, with the, help of the good Lord and the Holy Spirit. Yes, sir. Amen. That's what I, I believe that. The Bible, the Bible says, Apostle Paul says, I die daily. So what is the key, like you said, for understanding and giving our covenant precedent? How do we release the flesh, those desires of the flesh? How do we surrender those for a higher calling that we may not necessarily feel, but it's a faith walk? We have to have that mental understanding that what God said is real and true, and that's where we originate our faith, but then again, That's like right. you said, these desires, this flesh, the influence of the world is always putting pressure from within and from without. What is our defense? Is it, uh, and, and I'm getting this from Holy Spirit God, is it? Is it just the word of God? We have to digest his word to be able to defend ourselves? That sounds like the truth to me. Yes, sir. It's, it's definitely the word because Romans 12, 1 and 2 says, I beseech you, therefore, brothers, by the mercies of God, you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, except for what yeah. your reasons for the service. Verse 2, and be not conformed to this world, but be yeah. transformed by the renewing of your mind. The only way to renew mm. your mind is through the word. You have to be. You have mm. to say what he says instead of mm. what you're seeing. We tend to confess what we see, just smell, taste, and touch, instead of saying what mm. God says about the situation. But if we Amen. can say what he said, we can have what he said. But it's only right. happen if we connect with his word. Now, you can't confess something you ain't read. So it has, to right. be a daily life. <laughs> it has to be a daily a walk, just reading and praying and connecting with the Father. The second thing is the root word, it, it requires discipline. Not just to read every day, but to abstain from the things that feel good. Nobody, mm. if they told you it didn't feel good, they're probably lying to you. Oh, Lord. But mm. if they told you that white macadamia cookies uh, didn't taste good, they're probably lying to you. They lie. Oh, uh, but what you have to do is, no matter how good it tastes, smell, look, touch, we got to choose what God said about it more than what we feel it. And the way to do that is by discipline, which is the root mm. word from discipleship. The, the problem that you first started with was the young guys. The young guys haven't been discipled by fathers. Because they missed discipleship, they missed the discipline. And they, they read a couple of scriptures and went off. You know, they heard mm-hmm. his word or they had an experience and they ran off. But they weren't discipled. And because That's they right. weren't discipled, they didn't get the discipline of how to stick and stay. So they mm-hmm. know how to court, but they don't know how to... Uh, Sustain a lifelong relationship You know They know how to Hunt But they don't know how to uh, Go and and sustain a house You know Yes sir So I'm going to believe That it's the wisdom of God That allows us to go through Tough times Hard trials And challenges To break through That tough male ego That we have And realize I don't have the abilities, I don't have the resources to be able to fix myself or to get myself out of this mess. So the trials humble us, and then we seek God. I guess it's not until we get in trouble before we seek the master. Oh, that's one way of seeking them, but if you're really wise, you'll recognize that I'm a sinner in need of a Savior. And you won't even wait till it's ugly. You'll recognize that the all-powerful, infinite Almighty God we serve can be on your side. You can be yes, on the sir. side of, he said, I've never seen the righteous forsaken nor a seed beggar break. He also, mm. you can be on the side of the all wise God. And you don't have to experience the pain. You can see the pain and everybody else flies around you and recognize you want something different. You don't mm. have to go through it. 
You, you can That's receive true. the wisdom of their of their issues, and then find mm. the guy who says I need that. Now the Amen. wise have to be strong enough. That's what a lot of folks wise are strong enough. They got saved because they didn't want to go to hell, but the wise wasn't strong <laughs> enough. Not just going to hell is mm. great, but I want life and life more abundant. Now that That's you right. said, I got to push a little harder. Amen. Amen. Well, I think that is just wonderful, and that is so true. Uh, we certainly don't have to go through the hard trials, but I think that is why it's such a priority for those of us that know the Lord to evangelize so that we can tell the story of Jesus and be that witness because we don't we don't want people to think that the Bible is antiquated, old, outdated, and does not apply to us. So we have to be that living Bible. Isn't that true? That's it. That's it. We we got to be a living epistle. Now, what I love is that you don't have to be fake. A lot of people think they mm. have to put on a picture of what Christianity mm. is. Man, okay. just be you and live your life. And Amen. because all they see is the people showing what they see on Sunday. But it's some folks who live Monday through Friday and, and deal with. So I need to see that you have victory Monday through Friday, not just what you look like on Sunday. <clears throat> I need you to see that even if you don't have victory, you fought with character. And you didn't lose your character or your integrity during your fight. What kind of Amen. God do you serve that you can go through what you're going through and not cry? One mm. of the characters in the Bible was Daniel. And went through a lot of stuff, but he never quit being a slave. But he also kept his character and got the respect of the king. Yes, sir. You and even he, and even that. though he, and even though he was in the uh, state that he was in, God still prospered him. He sure did. He sure did. He Amen. Sure did. We turned into fire. The gospel experience with my special guest, Reverend John Jones, is in the house, and he's sharing godly wisdom from the man of God perspective. And we're just talking about men, but we're going to be talking about some other things because it is the truth of the words that we speak that will eventually touch somebody's heart. They're watching us. They're listening to us. So it's all about being genuine in who we are in Christ. Like he just said, you don't have to fake it. You don't have to fabricate it. We are a workman created in Christ Jesus. And when we come back after this music break, I want to stir your spirits up. Y'all know how I do it here on Fire the Gospel Experience. We're going to talk about this newness in life that we have. And I'm going to let you know that Jonathan McReynolds is letting you know he has this newness in life. Why? Because he is loved by God. God is loving on me. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Oh. 
Hello, I'm Pastor Derek Easter, and you are listening to Fire, the gospel experience where the fire is a moving, uplifting, and unrestrained experience of biblical inspiration and gospel music. I pray that this fire radio ministry will uplift your spirit and give you new strength. Keep it tuned in and bless your family, friends, and co-workers by telling them about fire on this station. Yeah. 
Lord God, if you would just be so kind now that you've saved me and restored my life, made me whole. Yes, I'm still a work in progress, and so is all of my listeners. But, Father God, because you love me, Jesus, because you love us, will you just please use us? Don't let us get in your way. And we are just so grateful and thankful for the opportunity to be called your ambassadors for Christ, your children, your people. Lord, thank you. We bless your name. In Jesus, we pray. Amen. I guess we're just doing that Pine Bluff spectacular right here on Fire the Gospel Experience. That was the sounds of Morgus Alexis Monk, Pine Bluff, Arkansas's very own with Muse Me. That young lady is on her way to the Stellas. I'm telling you, fool around and get a Grammy up in here. She's already been awarded. She's a young lady, young millennial in Christ, and she is doing wonderful, wonderful things in the mighty name of Jesus in this music ministry. And before that, yes, we heard from Jonathan, Jonathan McReynolds with Loving Me. God is loving me, and then God is using me. And I believe he's loving you, and he's using you too. I'm having some wonderful man of God conversation with my special guest here talking about Reverend John Jones is here with us, and he's breaking the bread of life. And we're just going to start talking the conversation a little bit about this this newness of life because it needs to be talked about. So, man of God, yes, Minister Jones, if you would maybe start the process to help all of us understand what it takes because it's not an overnight thing. It's a process. It's a maturity. It's a growth a development when we're talking about this newness of life. What are some of the key signs that we can hold on to to confirm that we are becoming newer in Christ after we receive baptism and Holy Spirit? A couple of signs that will show that you've received the newness is the desire to do the things that you used to do. Um, you, there was a time once when you couldn't go by Subway and not get a white macadamia cookie. <laughs> there you go. But now you can you can go in there and when you go in there you see the cookies and you associate the pain of what it costs you versus <laughs> salad. Let me bring it home to you. There, there was places that you used to go by that you couldn't go by without doing what you had to do. Mm-hmm. But now you can ride by there and look at it and you thank God for delivering you from that foolishness. Yes, sir. When you, when, when you get to the place to what you used to want, you don't want anymore. Second thing mm-hmm. that shows the newness is when you desire the things of God more you de- than you desire the things of the flesh. Mm-hmm. What, whatever you feed daily is what's going to grow. And mm-hmm. it's your steady feeding the desires of the flesh 
then the, the flesh is going to grow. But if you yes, study the feet of the desires of the spirit, the spirit's going to grow. What, what mm-hmm. you see will each will, will grow. I, one of the phrases I learned was that what you will not master will master mm. you. Mm. What you won't bring order to in your life will bring order to you. You may have your finances in order. You may have your your family in order. You may have, uh, but you have this one thing that you do in the middle of the night where ain't nobody looking. But mm. because you refuse That's to bring it. order to that, it brings order into you. When you walk outside, your eyes are real free. They look at stuff you know you ain't got a bit of looking at. Come that, on, that's God. because you haven't brought order to where you you look good on paper. You look good in public. But mm. there's are areas that you haven't brought order to. And God mm-hmm. called us to bring order as men, especially, mm-hmm. to bring order mm-hmm. to a space. God spent the first 30, 20 some verses in Genesis um, creating the world so he can tell you to go to have dominion and bring order to it. He made it. He yes, wants you to bring order to it. That was one of the first things he told us to do. And if you can't bring order to yourself, then your mm. area of influence is smaller. So if mm. you want to be a great man, you got to first master your own soul, your own tongue. Yes, so part of, part of knowing that you made this, this, you're part of the new life is that you got order in areas where you mm. didn't have order before. Amen. 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 And then because we have this new way of living, talking, thinking, and behaving, we need to be prepared for the backlash that is sure to come from maybe some of those old friends and even some family members. Amen? That's true. That's true. You got to be ready for that. But who is my mother? Who is mm. my father? But the one who mm. does who do the will of my of the father. Yes, and sir. Can I get one more point of order? Um, yes, I sir. do a mentorship thing with, with young men, and they I'll, I'll explain to them that the mark of maturity isn't uh, how how big you've grown, how your voice has changed, how many women you can run. That's not that's, that's right. not manhood. The no, mark sir. of maturity is when is the is the internal discipline instead of external discipline. When mm. it's when it's trash in your house, external discipline says my mama gonna tell me to take it out, so I'm gonna take it out. But well, my wife don't tell me to take it out, so I'm going to take it out. But internal discipline says, as a man, I have a standard that trash don't belong in my house. And Come so on. because of this, when you see trash, but your automatic nature is it doesn't belong to my face, so I dismiss it. That's maturity. Mm-hmm. That's that's growing. Same thing with the things of God. If there's something in your life or your space that don't line up with the vision God gave you for your life, manhood mm-hmm. says, this don't belong. And because of my love for Christ, I have to dismiss it with the help of the Holy mm. Spirit. And as much yes, as you right. used to love it, as much as you used to indulge in it, you recognize that it has no place in your space. And that's manhood. Mm. That's maturity. Yes, sir. Amen. I have to say Amen. it because I didn't want any misunderstandings on that. Yes, sir. Amen. Amen. Get it straight, Doc. Help us out. Help our understanding. Now, for the benefit of those that didn't hear uh, Reverend Jones' last sermon over at New St. Hurricane Mission 8 Baptist Church. There's a reason why he's talking about those white macadamia and cookies. Come on now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, quick, quick back story. Um, recently, when I was I was trying to lose a lot of weight, and uh, I love white macadamia cookies. I love the way they taste. Mm-hmm. I love the way they feel mm-hmm. in my mouth. In yes, some sir. ways, it has a special way of, of baking them. Oh, no. And you can smell them when you walk in the door. Oh, yeah, oh it, no. It but uh-huh. it separated me from the vision God gave me for a body that represents the body of Christ. So I had to make okay. some hard choices. I, Amen. If I want a body that represents the body of Christ, I had to separate myself from the cookies that God created for, for enjoyment, man. The ones that, I don't know what they did. Subway thought they made sandwiches for a living, but if they ate their cookies, you, you'll find out <laughs> that real church is in, is in them cookies. Doc. But I have uh-huh. to, push past them cookies because I yes, see sir. the prize that God gave if I want this body. Now, here's the problem that a lot of folks don't believe. I'm still saved. I'm still disciplined. But every now and then, I smell them cookies, and I want one. What do you mm. think the thing you thought you were delivered from 
still have Come on, calling yes, yes, Lord. Lord. Man, yes, and what I had to do is I, I prayed. I talked to God, but it was still my flesh screaming yes. out for something. And uh-huh. so that's where the phrase comes from. I got to be more in my covenant. I got to be more cautious and mindful of my covenant than of my current condition. I got a covenant Amen. with myself that I want a body that looks like this. I got a covenant with my daughter that I'm going to live long enough to pray with her kids. I got a covenant with my with the God on earth, heaven to be an that of him. But I got to look like what he said we look like. I want to bring order to this. If I don't mm. keep those thoughts in front of me, I, I succumb to the fact that uh, them cookie shows real good. Uh, <laughs> Uh, and, for those, and, for, and for those of us that, that missed the bigger picture of it, the Word of God tells us that it's the little foxes that spoil the vine. So we have to take our development in proper measure. We could take those victories just as they come. Even if it seems insignificant to somebody else, we know that if I can just get a victory over here, as little as it may seem, that's a victory in the name of Jesus. And that's evidence that I put on my resume that if God will do that thing for me, I believe he'll help me to do whatever comes next. And then the more victories that we claim, when those big issues in life show up, we have already fortified our faith with evidence that God was right there. So it may seem like a cookie uh, on the outside, but on the inside, we know that it's another victory that God has helped us through. I'm going to say this, too, before I let you get out of here. I always tell my guests that when we get into these beautiful conversations, the time just seems like it flies by. And I promise you, it flew by on us, Reverend Jones. But (laughs) yes, sir. I, I mentioned the fact that we uh, will go through uh, issues sometime with family members and friends that will not necessarily be all that excited and thrilled and will even challenge this newness of life. They'll think that, you know, we let the these them church folks brainwash us and, and, and you change. I had some person tell me that, said, man, you change. And I said, what's wrong with change? Ain't nothing wrong with that. But what he was implying is, is that, you know, he thought that I was being seduced by some religious folks, not understanding it's not about religion, it's about relationship. So I want to say this, I want to say this, Reverend, do we in the church fully understand the importance of supporting, caring, and loving one another? Because when we come to church, we got our best face on, we, we dress real good, but a lot of times, we won't always talk about maybe some of the hell that we go through once we leave church. So share a little bit about the importance. And Jesus talked about it all the time. He said, if you love me, love your brothers. How can you say you love God who you've never seen and don't love your brother who you see every day? Share with us the importance of believers Supporting and loving one another. It, it's essential. Uh, I love what you said. Forsake not the assembling of yourselves. It's, it's essential because we were created as social beings. No man is an island. In prison, one of the punishments is isolation. So what we have to do is recognize that strength comes from uh, familiarity. Familiarity. I mean, comfort comes from familiarity. And that comes from uh, being around something, doing something repetition. You can't uh, gain strength by yourself. It has to be a communal thing because that's how God created us. As, mm-hmm. So we have to, as a community, and, and the church don't do an awesome job of this, I'll be frank. Uh, uh, we, we bring them in the church, they get saved, and they say, okay, go get it. But now mm-hmm. it has to be uh, a love. They need to know not just that God loves you, but his people do too. We love you enough to where we extend who we are so we can connect with you. And that doesn't happen enough. Here's the reason why it's important. In the absence of our love, they'll receive the love of a gang or another social organization. And that's my family. In the absence of our love, they'll receive unhealthy relationships because... Oh, this person may do un- 
Christ-like things to them. But because that's the only place they feel love, they subject themselves to things that God had called them to. All Amen. in the absence of us being who we are supposed to be, which is, the Bible said it like this, love and kindness have I drawn me. He didn't say with a great choir. He didn't say with a great sermon. Mm. He didn't even say with a, a, a nice pretty building. What he said, love and kindness have I drawn me. And so, in step one of research, one of the uh, leader research uh, institutions for churches says that most people join churches, I mean, visit a church from friends and family. They didn't say mm-hmm. for the choir, they didn't say for the preacher. It, was, it came through relationships. So if That's the right. people of God got serious about relationships and serious about their walks, then the, the, our communities could be affected and the kingdom of God will grow and we'll have better outcomes with men and all. I believe that. Yes, sir. Mm. Amen. Wonderful words, wonderful words, wonderful encouragement and exhortation. Now, I would like for you to maybe share any of your personal contact. If there's a listener out there that may would like to maybe uh, have you share more word and maybe mentor them or lead and guide them in the ways of Christ likeness and this newness of life that we have in Jesus. Or if there's some musicians out there that would just like to collaborate, we have no way of knowing what the future may hold. There may be a concert uh, going on between you and a, a fellow musician that's listening to this broadcast. Is there any contact information that you'd like to share? Yes, sir. You can find me uh, on Facebook, John B. Jones. Also, you can find me at uh, my email address is John B. Jones. One seven four zero at yahoo dot com, and um, also uh, you can call the ministry at eight seven zero eight seven two two five zero zero John Jones eight seven zero eight seven two two five zero zero, and I'm looking to do whatever I can to advance the kingdom of God. That's my goal. Amen. Yes, and why don't you give them an uh, invitation to our wonderful church on Saturday, on Sunday's uh, worship service and Tuesday, uh, CLS. I'm glad. Let me, let me tell you, friends and family, people of God, don't die and go to heaven without coming to experience the worship at New St. Hurricane Baptist. Not just because I'm there. Three reasons that I've done. Number one, God is there. Amen. Number two, the people will love you. Amen. And, and, and three, and most of all, is that you don't want to miss what God got from you because you were out of place, out of time. Yes. Today is the day. This is the place. And a new St. Hurricane is the place. Today is the day. Sunday, 11 o'clock, uh, Bible study, Tuesday night. Looking forward to seeing all you guys. Until the end. Amen. Amen. CLS, Christian Life Studies, right there Tuesday night at 6.30 p.m. If you're in the Pine Bluff, Little Rock, Dumas, all time area, why don't you come on out and get a word? Now, if you got a church home, we ain't trying to steal you. We're just trying to get some good, no. good godly fellowship while we're down here on earth. Listen, man of God, thank you so much for joining us. I appreciate who you are in Christ. And I'm looking forward to have you come back whenever your schedule permits. I want you to come back and bless us with more understanding, wisdom, and instruction in the Word of God. Will you do that for us, please? I will definitely do that. Thank you for the opportunity. Yes, sir. Amen. God bless you. My special guest for Fire, the Gospel Experience, and that is Reverend Don Jones, was in the house blessing us with Amen. Amen. We got so much more for you right here on Fire the Gospel Experience. Don't you dare go nowhere. We just about to turn the heat up on this particular broadcast and really get our praise on. You are listening to Fire the Gospel Explosion, where the praises are going up and the worries are going away. Playing for you the best and the newest gospel music on the planet and the most inspiring encouragement under God's heaven. Keep tuning in and bless your family, your friends, and your co-workers by telling them about fire.
It's been a million days and a million nights. Oh, I still remember how your love changed my life. It's not enough words in my vocabulary to express how I feel. with word of 
I'm talking about a woman of God that says she is a child of God who's in love with the will and ways of him and a purpose. That's right. I love that word. Purpose being fulfilled through him coming from our very own reborn and revitalized city of Pine Bluff, Arkansas. You may have heard about crime and all sort of negative things about Pine Bluff, just like when I was in Detroit. You never heard a lot of good things about Detroit, and you probably never heard a lot of good things about Pine Bluff, but we want y'all to know that our city is in a resurrection, that our city is being revitalized. And so I am so encouraged to have people that are residents here to bear witness of not only the rebirth of our city, but the spiritual revival that is taking place in our city. So without any further delays, happy to introduce to some and present to others my special guest for Word Up that is none other than Evangelist Cassie Williams is in the house. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. That's the end of the day. Praise the Lord, Bless woman God. of God. Amen. Bless, Bless God, God. And how are you doing? Amen. See that you on fire already. I'm just, I, I, I'm just ready to cut you loose. I feel fire coming out of you right now. <laughs> God is good. God is good. He keeps on keeping. If you if we let him, he will keep on keeping us. Yes, Amen. Lord. All we got to do is fill in the blank. God is everything we need. If you need a healer, if you need a deliverer, if you need a a, a messenger, if you need a lawyer, a doctor, I promise you, God is everything in everything. So listen, without uh, holding uh, that fire that's in you that I can sense right now, I'm going to go ahead and pass you the microphone and the platform, and then we'll talk a little bit about the wonderful ministry that you are doing in Christ Jesus in this kingdom building. Go right ahead, my dear sister, with Word Up. All right, well, I want to speak on relationships because relationships is pretty much everything because relationships started with us and God, or God and us. And I, I feel like that so many people have become broken based on some type of relationship, whether it's with a spouse, or a family member, or a job, or children, whatever it is, it's relationship-based. And so, for me, coming back to Christ, that first love has brought me into a better life. And we talk about the mm. of life, it has brought me into a better life because now that I'm so focused on the relationship that I have with God, these yeah. other worldly relationships, they can't knock me off course. You know, they might shake and rattle us, of course, but if you if you have a relationship with God, that number one relationship, all the rest mm. of these relationships won't, won't affect you as much because mm. God is going to help you see whether or not that situation that you're in is a good situation, is an okay situation, or it's a situation that I'm just in for right now, so he's teaching me something so I can move on. Whatever it is, it's going to keep you in that mindset that you need to be in so you can continue on. And I just feel like that once we give ourselves back to Christ, because he's waiting, he, he's never left our side. And once we give our all, give ourselves completely back to him, all the rest of these relationships that we're trying to invest in that we're trying to get they won't they won't carry so much weight on us because mm-hmm. that is what's causing us that is what's causing us to be pretty much so dead we, we, we're walking dead because we're so focused on something that's really not even important right now yeah and once we realize mm-hmm. that we can we can move forward you know we can we can see we can see even the negative we can see it in the positive because we know all things work for the good of those who love the Lord who is called according to their purpose so we're going to find right. the good in any situation because we have that main relationship that's at the top of all other relationships I look mm. at it like our plans our plans if they're not lined up with the plans of God they're really just we're just really they're just really an open casket 
Mm. That's all. No, but the good no, thing about Jesus. the fact that they're open caskets, it means that we still have breath and we still have the ability to come up out of those things and walk into a different direction. We The, the, the lid is not closed on us yet. So long as that thing is open, if we just get that relationship with God that we're supposed to have, we can easily rise up out of that situation. I mean, for my own testimony, I was in a broken relationship for 17 years. Mm. And I stayed there, and I stayed there, and I did this and I did that. But until I started mm. crying out to Jesus, until I developed that relationship with Jesus, because, you know, you can learn from your parents, from your grandparents, from the mothers of the church, from the deacons of the church. But until you get that own relationship, your own personal relationship with God, that's the mm-hmm. only thing that's going to turn your life around. You have mm-hmm. to get that relationship with God, and then everything else will fall in line. Amen. And that's what I love yeah. about the relationship with God. I, I, that's what I love, because we know that, like uh, Reverend Jones was saying, that this is a social world, and everybody wants to be loved, and everybody wants their soulmate, or everybody wants to fit in, or belong here, or belong there. But sometimes we put ourselves in situations that are bringing death to us, per se, because we want to belong in, and we want to fit in, but we're not making the right choice. Mm-hmm. And it's all based on the relationship, whatever kind of relationship that we're trying to get or we're trying to have or we're trying to stay in, that's what it's based mm-hmm. off of. Mm-hmm. Amen. So, Amen. I just, I just, I want to enjoy everyone too. Amen. That's a powerful word. That's a powerful word. Relationships, letting us know that that's where it all starts right there. Amen. Now, um, I know that you are involved in different ministry words. Got to give a shout out to prophetess Monica Flowers. Uh, I, know amen, that, amen. I know that you all and Apostle Betty White, I know that you all are so very active in the community. I commend you all for that. I support y'all and I salute y'all in that regard. So tell us a little bit about your role as an evangelist so that someone out there that may be looking for their calling can hear what you have to say about being an evangelist that will help them find who they are in the body of Christ. My my thing is helping one another. We are here to help one another. And it can be in any kind of way. It can be as to bringing someone to Christ. Or it can just be praying for someone. Or it can just be a listening ear. Because that's what we are here to do. It's not necessarily to, you know, try to make someone feel a type of way. Because a lot of us can judge. And we can judge the wrong way. But being an evangelist is basically like someone that's there that's willing to help in whatever in whatever way you need that help. It, it could be just being there in your presence, whatever it, whatever it may be at that particular moment. That's what you are to do as an evangelist. And me, I help in whatever way that I'm asked to help. I, if I, if it's cooking, if it's cleaning, if it's watching watching children, whatever. If it's speaking, whatever it may be. If it's putting up cords, holding cords, or that's our job is to help one another. And we can't Amen. look at what someone has or what someone doesn't have or what position someone's in or what position you want to be in. We have to get our self out the way. And evangelists have to get their self out the way and do what it is that God has called each and every one of us to do. And that's fulfill his will. That's right. Amen. Amen. That's right. Well, listen, you are doing a fabulous job. I appreciate those words of encouragement and truth that you shared with us. And I'm going to continue to pray for you, your ministry, uh, and your family ministry sisters, talking about Apostle Betty White and Prophetess Monica Flowers. I am so glad to have met you, kingdom builders. Y'all are just an awesome example and demonstration of a true believer and women of God. Y'all keep shining for Jesus. Amen? Amen. Amen. Thank you so much. 
And I need to say congratulations to you. I understand that there's an engagement going on. I hope you don't mind me announcing this publicly on the radio I to my do. dear friend. I don't. To, because it's Tobias a Rogers. It's to, to yeah. my dear friend Tobias Rogers, congratulations. Looking forward to the nuptials. Pray God bless y'all Amen. with long life, love, peace, and joy in upcoming Amen. marriage. I'll be there. Y'all just give me the date so I can be there. Oh. We'll do. Amen. Amen. March the 28th, 2020. <laughs> Uh-oh. I got you now. Amen. Thank you about this, sister. Now, like I tell everybody, once y'all been on my show, I have the right to claim y'all as belonging to fire, the gospel experience. You belong to me now. I got y'all. Amen. Hey, I'm here. <laughs> <laughs> Amen. God bless you. Amen. I'm just Amen. Your people. Amen. I absolutely love the people of God. That's why God put me here, so that I can just have a good time fellowshipping with you all and making y'all known to the world uh, what it is y'all do. So if you're out there and you are a minister, if you are a gospel artist and you want to be part of this move of God right here on Fire the Gospel Experience, why don't you get in touch with me? You can give me a call at 870 870-413-0220. Zero two two zero. If I don't get right back at you, just leave a message. And I promise you, I will. Or you can send me an email, Ronald Jefferson One at AOL dot com. For all you gospel artists that's looking for airplay, send me your MP three music links, Ronald Jefferson One at AOL dot com, and I'll get you in there. I will help you spread your territory as the Lord sees fit. And there's also Facebook page, Ryan E Jefferson as well as a fire Facebook page. So you have multiple ways to get in touch with me. I'm looking for you. I'm looking to collaborate with you. I'm looking to fellowship with you as we uplift our God because he is worthy. He is almighty. He deserves all of our praise, and we surrender our lives to him willingly with joy and peace. So listen, speaking of MP3 music and sending it to me, is brand new music from Woman of God and my friend, Minister Tracy Talata singing about our God. Don't you know that he is the most high?
you do. No one can sit in your place, Lord. We lay our friends before you. You are most Hello, everybody. This is the Sanctified Soldier, Apostle Thomas, and you are listening to Fire, the gospel experience where the fire is a moving, uplifting, and unrestrained experience of biblical, inspirational, and gospel music. I pray that my new single titled, Thank You, will uplift your spirit and give you new strength. Keep it tuned in and bless your family and friends and coworkers by telling them about Fire. On this station, it's all about kingdom building. Praise God. Thank you. 
Hello, I'm Life Coach, Prophetess, and Evangelist Monica Flowers, and you are listening to Fire, the Gospel Experience with my brother, Ronnie Jefferson. This Fire Radio Ministry will bless your souls with uplifting biblical inspiration and also anointed gospel music. I pray that my anointed Facebook Live video sermons and posts will not only uplift your spirit, but challenge you to live a more kingdom-minded life. Also, I believe my new book, If I Had One Wish, where I take my readers on a deeper spiritual journey as I had to go on after the passing of my husband, will bless your life. To purchase my book, you can paypal.me forward slash if I had one wish. Or you can go on Amazon if I had one wish by Monica Flowers. It's also available Kindle ebook style. I praise God because he is definitely worthy. So keep it tuned in and bless your family, friends, and coworkers by telling them about fire on this station where it's all about kingdom building. Blessings.
you best believe that when the Lord opens a door, there is no one or no thing that can close that door. But you also need to understand that when the Lord closes a door, there is no one that or nothing that can open it. And I found that out 12 years ago when I was in Detroit, grew up in Detroit, born in Pine Bluff, Arkansas, spent the majority of my life in Detroit, Michigan, got laid off. I promise you I was going to the point office two or three times a week for those six months that I had that unemployment, couldn't get a job, bag, and groceries. Lord have mercy. What's going on? Got all kinds of certificates and licenses and everything. It was going all over the place, and it didn't even matter because the Lord had a plan that I had no idea of knowing that he wanted me to come back to my birthplace, Pine Bluff, Arkansas, where I've been for the past 12 years. I had to lay my dear sweet mother to rest nine years ago. I had to lay my great auntie, Corrine Mixon, my mother, Mary Alice Jefferson, my great aunt, Corrine Mixon, to rest about four or five years ago. There's not many men left in my family, so I understand that God had a plan. Left my beautiful four daughters in Detroit. I want y'all to know Jovan, Anisha, Nina, Kiana. I love y'all. I miss y'all. Y'all know I love y'all. I miss y'all every single day. So I just need to give a shout out. Listen, I need to give a shout out too because this is this evangelistic outreach ministry where we do pray. Yes, Lord. And I'm praying for my dear friend, Joyce Moore, who is going through issues with her health. We had conversations and issues with her job, and I know that there are many of you that are going through issues with elderly parents that are sick and ailing. I want you to know I'm praying for each and every one of you. I believe Shanice Hill Sullivan, I think she posted that on Facebook and going to a family member, and I want you to know my dear sister, sisters, and everything's going to be all right. It's in the Lord's hand. You can just trust and believe that he'll make a way, and he'll prepare us for whatever we need to be able to be prepared for it to go through and to trust that he has our best interest in mind always, giving you spiritual motivation here on the gospel experience. We are embracing the newness of life that the Apostle Paul spoke about in Romans 6 and 4, where he said, therefore, we are buried with him by baptism into death. That like as Christ was raised up from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so we also should walk in newness of life. Now the question is, what is dead and what is living for and in us as we follow Christ? It seems that even after our baptism, the submerging under the water, which represents the burial of Christ, there are those things in our lives that fight to stay alive. That are from our old man and our old ways. Now, I know I've got a witness right there. I'm just testifying. If you can identify, just say amen, wave your hand. Now, the Bible declares that, like the Apostle Paul, we die daily. 1 Corinthians 16 and 31 says that. We die daily. And Paul tells us of the end of struggle in Romans 7 15, where he says, For that which I do not. I do, I'll allow not. But what I would, that do I not. But what I hate, that do I. Romans 6 and 4 says that like as Christ was raised up from the dead, so by faith, that in spite of our proclivities, beloved, for sin, lust, and doubt, we must persevere in knowing that the same power, hallelujah, that raised our Lord Jesus, who was dead and in his grave, will also raise us up from our dead trespasses of sin, guilt, and shame. Hallelujah. Yes, yes, yes. We will still his workmanship in Christ Jesus. Ephesians 2.10 lets us know. And the word goes on to say, by the glory of the Father, even so, we also should walk. In the newness of life. Now, we honor God and give glory to him and his precious name as we live and demonstrate our new transformed lives to the onlooking world. Because you better believe they're looking, they're watching. They want to see if what we believe, what we claim, what we say is genuine. And also to each other, yes, but also to ourselves, yes. 
we demonstrate our new transformed lives. No one knows us better than we ourselves. I mean, who we are and what we used to think, say, and do, we know that our change is real. We don't put on no show for presentation and or fabricate some false public image. No, sir, no, ma'am. We, like the false of Paul, still have our weaknesses and temptations to overcome. And yet, we are living a new life. We're talking about newness of life. So what does this newness of life entail? We'll talk about that as we go further into spiritual motivations right here on fire. The gospel experience just wants you to know that we are blessed. And not only that, Lord Jesus, when we get over there, we're going to have a wonderful, wonderful time. To Junior Heavy D. Robertson singing about when we get there. Hallelujah.
Jesus, what a beautiful song. Sounds of gospel artist Beverly Heath with I Need Your Love. And before that, yes, we heard from Junior Heavy D. Robinson with When We Get Over There. And Lord Jesus, we can never forget evangelist Delisa James talking about those doors that the Lord God opened like only he can. Thank you, Lord God, for everything that you have done, are doing, and will do. We give you sincere praise, not just with our lips, but with our whole heart and with the lives that we live, embracing Romans 6 and 4. We're talking about the newness of life. And 
you want to know what does this newness of life entail? Well, remember our elders used to, and they still say, I don't go those places I used to go. I don't say those things I used to say, and I don't do those things I used to do. That's a good demonstration of the newness of life. Now, I don't go those places I used to go. The word of God says, and he that taketh not his cross and followeth after me is not worthy of me. Matthew 10 and 38. Now, as I walk in my daily life, I need to be aware of my surroundings and not be under the influence, but influence my surroundings with the Christ that's in me. And I, I don't say those things I used to say. The word of God again says the mouth of the righteous speaketh wisdom and his tongue talketh of judgment. Psalms 37 and 30. Now, as a new person in God, I have to guard my mouth in what I say and how I say it. <laughs> the Bible declares that doth have fountain sent forth at the same place sweet water and bitter. James 3.11. No. So we have to be mindful and our conversations have to be salted with righteousness. Amen. I don't talk the way I used to talk. I don't use those explicitory words like I used to. Thank God for the change. And it finally says, I don't do those things that I used to do. The word of God again says, trust in the Lord with all thine heart and lean not unto thine own understanding. In all thy ways, acknowledge him, and he shall direct thy path. Proverbs 3, 5, and 6, one of my all-time favorites. So listen, in all thy ways means just that, in all of our ways. It's so much better to trust God and not fully know all that there is to know in any given circumstance than to just keep repeating the same mistakes over and over and going down a winding road that leads nowhere under our own thinking. This newness of life is our true sign of a born-again believer in our Lord Jesus the Christ. Amen. Giving you spiritual motivation to keep you moving forward in the precious and mighty name of Jesus. You're tuned in to fire the gospel experience. Praising our God. And lifting him up. Now, don't you know we need to pray? Here's the new Curly Gates. Singing about it way better than I can testify. And I can testify with the best of them. In Ephesians 6 and 18, the Bible declares, And pray in the Spirit on all occasions, with all kinds of prayer and requests. With this in mind, be alert. And always keep on praying for the Lord's people. I come to tell you today that prayer truly does change things. So in this season, let's get together and pray. Pray. We need to pray. That's what we need to do.
a.k.a. Lady Falana, and you are listening to FIRE, the gospel experience. FIRE is a moving, uplifting, and unrestrained experience of biblical inspiration and gospel music. I pray that my radio ministry, BFTM Productions, will uplift your spirit and give you a new strength. Hey, tune in to BFTM Productions at bftmpro.com to listen to the best in Christian programming with God, anointed ministers, preachers, gospel artists, and more. Keep tuning in and bless your family, friends, co-workers. Tell everybody about FIRE, the gospel experience on this station. Hallelujah. I want to send a big shout out. Happy birthday. Happy and blessed birthday to my dear friend, CEO of BFTM. Pro.com, where Fire the Gospel Experience is syndicated on that show, Lady Alana Wilson. Happy birthday, my dear sister. God bless you. I pray he bless you with many, 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 and many, many more on top of that. Thanking all my special guests for joining me on this Fire Gospel Experience. Had such a wonderful time with you all, like I always do. God bless you. Man of God, Reverend John Jones, thank you so much for joining us. Evangelist. Cassie Williams, God bless you. God bless each and every one of y'all for listening and supporting this gospel experience. I pray the Lord will bless you. Sanctified socks off. I'm going to love you. I'm going to pray for you. Ain't nothing you can do about it. So your mind will just go on and love me and pray for me back. So until next time, y'all be blessed. Check out my Facebook fire page. I have events going on on that fire Facebook page as well as music and sermons to keep you uplifted in the mighty and precious name of Jesus. Until next time, I love y'all. Y'all be blessed. Keep me in your prayers because the devil is busy, but guess what? God says we have the victory in the precious name 